After shocking anti-Semitic chants broke out on the steps of the Sydney Opera House last night. Yes, were thrown, anti-Semitic slurs chanted and an Israeli flag set on fire during that illegal pro-Palestinian rally last night. Jews night. to be told you should stay home because we can't guarantee your safety in Sydney is it's abhorrent. What are you seeing here where people are trying to tell Jews that anti-Semitism isn't happening? The slaughter of more than 1,200 Israeli Jews by Hamas on October 7, and Israel's subsequent war against Hamas in Gaza, which has left some 40,000 people dead, has not just changed Australia, it has convulsed it. Not since the Vietnam War, more than 50 years ago, has a foreign conflict so divided Australians. On the evening of October the 9th last year, in front of this iconic building, something happened that would divide the nation and change it perhaps forever. The beautiful sails of the Sydney Opera House were bathed in the colours of blue and white, the Israeli flag. It was a time for mourning, it was a time for reflection. Instead, hundreds of pro-Palestinian protesters chose that moment to march down to the Sydney Opera House. And what unfolded then would shock the country. They burnt the Israeli flag, they stomped on it, and they chanted vicious anti-Semitic slurs. The police advised the Jewish community not to come near the Opera House. It was a remarkable and shocking scene. It's really been across the board that the Jewish community has been targeted. And yet, even the night before October 9, in Lakemba, we had Islamic preachers celebrating the deaths of Israeli Jews. I'm elated! It's a day of courage! Yesterday yes. happened. Was the first time our brothers and sisters broke through the largest prison on earth! On that night, the night, several hundred pro-Palestinian protesters came here to the steps of the Opera House and held a protest. Israel had not even started to retaliate in Gaza for those murders. It was a situation last night where racial epithets were thrown at the Jewish community by the mere fact that they were members of the Jewish community, which is shocking and abusive. It was a moment which shocked the authorities, it shocked the government, it certainly shocked many Australians. It certainly shocked the Australian Jewish community. Today, we bring the people's protest into parliament. Free, free Palestine. Uh, I don't think people should be coming in from that war zone at all. Watch your words, watch your actions. There is a direct correlation between inflamed language, inflamed tension and violence. Religiously, it's pitted Jews against Muslims. Generationally, it's pitted lots of older Australians against younger Australians. And politically, it has divided Australia between the far left of politics, which has embraced the pro-Palestinian movement, and the far right of politics, which has embraced the Israeli cause. We've seen Labor struggle to maintain a balance between these two, infuriating both sides at the same time as they try to steer a course. The evil committed by Hamas in Israel has chilled every Australian heart. I announce my resignation from the Australian Labor Party. Silence. Order. Stop the being racist. Leader of the opposition. President, the world demands a ceasefire in Gaza. The Greens, however, have openly aligned themselves with the pro-Palestinian movement in a way that we really haven't seen in Australia before. This political divide is passionate. It can be very, very nasty. And it's really been a striking feature of the very difficult year since October 7. It is hate speech and it's not protected here on campus. I would totally reject the idea that our camp is anti-Semitic in any way, shape or form. Police have been contacted by multiple universities. One of the biggest flashpoints of the Israeli-Palestinian issue over the past year has been at universities and colleges. Here at the University of Sydney, students camped for almost two months in pro-Palestinian protests and that was repeated in colleges and universities across the country. The students argued that they were just protesting and they were exercising their rights to free speech. That was generally accepted until a hardcore element of the protesters 
went beyond that and started to chant anti-Semitic slogans at times and also hold up anti-Semitic signs and placards. At that point, Jewish students said, this is unsafe, we can't come on campus, we don't feel comfortable, that's not free speech, that's hate speech. There's a fine line between the two. The issue went up to the management of universities, to the leaders of these institutions, and they were like a deer in the spotlight. They did not know what to do, which way to jump. Special envoy, and the testimonials are heartbreaking and unacceptable, and for that I am sorry. No one should feel at risk, unsafe or unwelcome at any place of learning, and no one should feel the need to hide their identity or stay away from classrooms or campuses. We've had a lot of anti-Semitism across the board against the Jewish community. We've seen it in places like Officeworks, where a customer was refused to get service. What's that? I'm pro-Palestine. That's okay, you get to do a job of laminating. Yeah, we, can, we have the right to deny jobs. We've seen strange situations like war memorials being defaced by the pro-Palestinian movement, despite the fact that they've got nothing to do with Gaza. We've seen a lot of major trolling of Jewish community figures, artists like Deborah Conway, for example, the ARIA award singer. We've seen situations where whole community groups have been doxxed in Caulfield at the Jewish heartland of Melbourne. A pro-Palestinian group chose to protest there outside a synagogue. It's remarkable to think that an event that happens across the other side of the world would actually impact on Australians so much and would inflame opinion across dinner tables, in the parks, in the streets. Palestine activists gate crashed an anti-Semitism rally at state parliament sparking. Facing off two groups deeply divided. It's printing out faces about being baby killers. Support for a terrorist organization. Uh, should and will immediately draw the attention of our security agents. all come back together and work together because there's a legitimate arguments on all sides here. Where do we get a break from this division? In the Middle East, unfortunately, has never looked so far away from peace as it is now. The challenge for Australia over the next year is going to be to lower the temperature across the board. This is a conflict that's divided politics, institutions, universities, students, parents and families. It'll be a huge challenge, but hopefully Australia is up to it.